What's up you guys, it's Cody coming back at you with another video and we just got the truck back from the shop, just got the gears redone. We went from the stock 373s to 488 gears due to the 40 inch tires. Now this has been a long time coming. I got the lift and tires put on a little over a year ago now and <laughs> really I've been saying that I need to get the rear gear done since I got the lift done, it's been a year. Uh, I just kept putting it off, you know, it was more of a matter of not wanting to drop my truck off to get that work done i don't really like not having the truck and getting stuff done to it when when they did my lift man i think they had the truck for a couple months i don't remember exactly how long it was but it was rough having my truck at the shop for that long you guys can watch that video as to why it took so long a couple months seemed long but there were other reasons there were reasons why they had it for so long but anyways i hated it didn't want to drop my truck off again uh finally got it done you can see we got our badges right there that they put on the company that did the re-gear repainted the rear differential as you can see nice new black paint from doing the uh, rear end obviously did the front as well doesn't i think they forgot to paint the front but it's all right um i'm not really worried about that there's the badge on the front so we got our new gears put in and for anybody that's curious it actually cost 2500 dollars out the door uh, actually a little less than 2500 it was 2415 dollars out the door uh parts tax labor everything to get the front and rear done at the uh, shop that i went through like i said 488s now to be honest with you i was thinking i wanted to go 456s people were telling me different ratios some people had 37s and 38s and they were telling me 456s two different shops that i talked to plus all the calculators online said i needed 488s and the shop that i went to told me i need 488s so I took their word for it with the 488s and we're going to see how they are. So I already obviously drove the truck home from the shop. I didn't get that on video for you guys uh, because I was listening and making sure everything was going okay. And there's obviously a break in period with the new gears. I'll get into that a little bit more in a second. But yes, we drove the truck home. I was uh, you know, driving it super light because of the break in period. You don't want to accelerate or brake really hard. So I didn't really get to feel much of the effects yet. Just drove it home nice and slow. That was our first break in period. The differentials are cooling now. That's part of the break-in period. And um, we'll hit up the freeway in a second and uh, go for a drive, see what the RPMs are like at the freeway. And that'll pretty much be our second portion of the break-in period. And then there will be another cool in cool down period that the differentials need. And the break-in period will be pretty much done. And then maybe I'll do a little more driving soft. I don't want to get on it too hard, too quick, but you know, uh, at, at some point in this video, we'll be doing some around town driving. So right now we're going to hit up the highway then we'll do some around town driving and see how the gears are. So let's go ahead and jump in the freeway and see how it goes. Real quick before we hit the road, just want to remind you guys that we do a no half-ass decal giveaway in every single video. So I give one of these decals away, which is no half-ass my brand. Every single video that I do, all you guys have to do to enter to win the giveaway is leave a comment on my video, okay? So just leave a comment down below and you're entered in to win the decal, give, uh, the decal giveaway. And like I said, we do one every single video, so make sure you comment on my future videos for your chance to win. You can also check out nohowfastapparel.com and check out some of my other decals. Pick one up for $10 with free shipping. Pick, out, uh, pick yourself up a big decal for your back window and we got some hats available as well. All right, guys, so we just got on the freeway again. We did already do the first portion of the break-in period. They told me to do two 30 minute drives with a minimum of 45 minutes to an hour of cool down in between. So we did the first 30 minute drive home, uh, parked the truck at home, let the differential cool down. So now we're on the second portion of the break in period that they recommended. Uh, driving around town, I have not gone on it hard. So we, we haven't really felt a huge difference yet because I haven't gone on it hard because we're on the break in period. But even driving around town with a super light foot, just barely getting on it barely pushing the pedal down and the truck just moves like like as if I have stock tires it does not feel like my truck is trying to move big heavy 40 inch tires anymore you know don't it, it's not like it turned the truck into a race truck it's not like all of a sudden the truck can do mad burnouts and stuff like that but it just feels so much easier to get the truck moving it does not feel like I'm moving these heavy 40 inch tires anymore barely barely put anything into the little the skinny pedal and the truck just moved. So it is nice, I do feel a big difference. But again, we'll get harder into it around town after the break-in period. For now, we're on the freeway. Let's check out the highway RPMs. I did see them a little bit on the way home already. 
but now I want to share them with you guys, so let's check them out. Alright you guys, so right now we're cruising at about exactly 60 miles an hour. According to my edge monitor, we're going 60 miles an hour now. Before the reek here, I could go, I could cruise at 75 miles an hour, and I was at about 1700 RPM. Right now, I'm at, we're slowing down now because of traffic, so I can't even show you guys like I was going to, but I, I used to go 75 miles an hour at 1700 RPM. Right now, I was going 60 miles an hour at 1700 RPM. So definitely higher RPMs for sure. Uh, we're speeding back up right now, so maybe I can get to 60 and show you. Here we go. So that is about 60 miles an hour. You can see on the right, in the middle, 60, 61. And we got about closer to 18, 1900 RPMs right now. So definitely a little higher. Let's try and, uh, despite traffic, see if we can go a little faster. Alright you guys, so now we are cruising. Dang, I'm not sure if you can see it because of the sun, but we are cruising at about exactly 65 miles an hour. And that is 2000 RPM. 65 miles an hour, 2000 RPM. All right, so here we go, 70 miles an hour, which is cool, it's chilling. I like to cruise around 75, 80 before, but right now I'm going about 70 miles an hour, and I'm, at, I'm gonna show you in a second. 70 miles an hour, just about 2200 RPM, so. Again, hopefully you can see, a little under 70 right now. Let me zoom in a little. back up so there's 70 and we're at about 2100 I gotta slow down there's a car in front of me but all right we'll try and get that view again but I was going 70 miles an hour and I was at about 2100 rpm which isn't terrible and here's the thing you know 70 miles per hour going about 2100 rpm and earlier on the way home I hit 75 I was about 2200 to 2250 rpm now when you say that especially in a truck that red lines around 3300 rpm you know cruising down the freeway at 75 miles an hour and 2200 rpm 2250 rpm sounds high but the gears are operating so well you guys it really doesn't feel bad it doesn't feel like the truck is screaming. It doesn't feel like the truck's sitting at high RPM and just Wah! cruising at 75. It doesn't feel like that. Even though 2200 RPM sounds kind of high to be cruising at, it really, it, it, the truck feels fine. It doesn't feel like it's working really hard. It doesn't feel like, uh, like uh, it's, like I said, it doesn't feel like it's screaming. It doesn't feel like the RPMs are super high. It's nice, it drives nice. I like to go a little faster against 75-80, and at that my RPMs are a little high. But 70-75, it's not bad. And earlier, I'll see if I can get you guys a view again, but when I was going 70-75 at about 2200 RPM, I was still getting decent fuel economy. I think my edge monitor right about 20. And that's about, probably not accurate for what I actually get, but that's about what my truck was reading before at the same speed at lower RPM, you know. There's still like a, a fuel to horsepower consumption rate that, you know, even at lower RPMs, your truck might have to consume more fuel to keep up at that speed, even though your RPMs are lower. That's, that's kind of what I was reading, and it seems to make sense now because my edge monitor is showing the same fuel economy at higher RPMs now with the new gears. And around town, man, the truck accelerates around town so easily. Again, I haven't gone on a hard, but it accelerates so easily that I do think we're gonna save some fuel around town. Now, that's not really what I care about. I didn't buy the truck to get a good fuel economy. I didn't do the gears to get better fuel economy. I did it to help save the transmission, drive easier around town, and tow easier if I tow in the future. But, hey, better fuel economy is a plus too, so not definitely not complaining about that. So right now we are cruising at 50 miles an hour and uh, this is about the range, 50 miles an hour is now where my truck kicks into overdrive. So we're cruising at 50 in overdrive and it, I, I can't show you, I'm exiting now, we slowed down. But I was reading about 22 to 25 um, miles, per, uh, miles per gallon just at 50 miles an hour. I think my RPMs were around 1500. So that's super low RPMs. Um, 50 is kind of a weird one, you know, it's 
you're not really going to be cruising at 50 very often on the highway and if you're around town you get to that speed there's traffic you're going to slow down and speed up but just so you guys know that's about that's about where we kick into overdrive now if you're uh just accelerating kind of lightly 50 miles an hour that's about when my truck kicks into overdrive now something i would like to point out i'm a little uh surprised and slightly disappointed about is i did think that the re-gear was going to cause the transmission not to work as hard right that's why you re-gear it less strain on the transmission i thought that was going to help keep my transmission temperatures a lot lower but for some reason my transmission temperatures are reaching uh i'm at 164 right now the highest i had seen before the re-gear since installing the mishimoto trans cooler was 152. I think 152 was the highest I had seen. Right now I'm seeing 165. So our transmission temperatures are actually getting a little bit hotter. Uh, not too happy about that, but to be completely honest with you, you know, I used to see 190 to 200 before the Mishimoto Trans Cooler. So we're still way lower than we used to be uh, before installing the, tra the Mishimoto Trans Cooler. Again, I used to see 190, 200. Now I'm seeing 165. But also, it is 92 degrees out today, which is pretty much the hottest day we've had over here in, in SoCal in, in a while. It hasn't even reached 90 degrees in a while, and when it did, I don't think I drove the truck. So it is 92 degrees today, about right now, it's about the peak of the day. So that could be a big contribution to why I'm seeing the highest transmission temperatures I've seen before. But I'm still a little disappointed, a little upset. Yeah, we're at 168 right now, again. Used to see up to 200, so 168 is not bad, but I am surprised that the temperatures are getting that high with the new gears. All right, you guys, so I am cruising at 75 miles an hour right now. 75, and we're at about 2300 RPM. Oh, blurry, 2300. Right in the middle, I'm gonna slow down now to 70, but we were right in the middle, so maybe it was closer to like 2250, but still, you know, it, it doesn't feel bad, like I said. It doesn't feel like the truck's struggling to maintain that. But 70 right now at 70 at 2200 RPM is kind of the sweet spot, so uh, 70's, 70 feels good. So check this out, guys. At 65 miles an hour, my RPMs are about 2000 and my edge is reading 20 miles per gallon. If I go up to 70 miles an hour, and my RPMs are about 2200, so 200 more RPMs, instead of 20 miles per gallon, my edge is showing like 25 miles per gallon, 22 to 25 miles per gallon. So again, I know that the edge monitor isn't actually showing me accurate fuel economy. However, it does kind of give me that representation, a broad idea, even if the numbers are off to my exact fuel economy, I am showing better fuel economy at 70 miles an hour at higher RPM than 65 miles an hour. I thought that's pretty. I thought that was pretty crazy. I wanted to share that with you guys. So there you go. That's my experience on the highway with the new 488 gears and 40 inch tires. Uh, I'm not in love with it. Like I would probably, if I could do it again. I would have told them to do 456s, but I also don't hate it enough to complain to them or try and get them to drop my truck off again and try and get them to put 456s in. Uh, overall, I'm, I'm happy enough with the 488s. Definitely accelerates better around town, uh, better than stock. Again, after this warm up period, I gotta go home and let the, the differential cool down some more. Uh, you're supposed to drive for 30, like I said, drive for about 30 minutes or 20 miles and let the differential cool down for a minimum of an hour and you have to do that twice so we're about to go home let the differential cool down for a minimum of an hour uh for the second time and then the break-in period will be pretty much over i'll still probably do some more driving um you know soft driving letting them break in some more before i start getting on it real hard so i'm going to do a little more breaking in in other words but that'll still be in this video, you know, stick around. That's just the uh, highway portion and again, how I feel about it. Like I said, if, if you're watching this, you haven't done it yet and you're gonna do a re-gear, I would probably recommend the 456s. But if you see, but I don't tow, or at least not yet. So I have 40 inch tires and I don't tow 
and I don't hate the 488s. They're a little high on the highway, but I don't hate them. But if I towed a lot, like if you have 40 inch tires on your 7.3 and you tow a big trailer or you know a travel trailer or a toy hauler a lot, then you'll probably like the 488s better for that. If you don't tow like I don't, then uh, I probably would be better off with 456s. But like I said, you know, I'm hoping to get a trailer in the near future. So when I do, I'm sure the 488s will be real nice for that. Come on. All right, you guys, so that was the highway portion of the testing period. The break-in period for the truck is pretty much over. We did our two break-in periods. It's another day, so the differential was more than cooled down. Uh, and we're pretty much gonna drive around town now. Like I said, I'm still gonna spend some extra time driving uh, light-footed so we can break in the gears, uh, you know, plenty, uh, get them plenty broken in before I really start driving hard on it. You know, we can drive around town normal now, you know, uh, without, you know, flooring it, but we can still test it out. And uh, man, I've been driving light-footed so far because I'm getting the truck warmed up, getting the engine and transmission warmed up and stuff. But even driving super light-footed, man, like I told you guys on the when I was on the highway, I can just feel a difference. Like already, I just barely have to put anything into the uh, acceleration pedal and the truck just moves like as if I don't even have 40s, man. It, it really feels like you can barely feel these 40s anymore. Feels like stock tires it's crazy like i said it's not like the truck feels like a race truck anymore like all of a sudden but it definitely just goes like it just feels planted to the ground it goes it doesn't feel like there's lag it just the truck just moves it's nice so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hit that hill the hill the famous hill by my house that i use for a lot of my video testing uh when i put new parts on and i test uh, test them out going over that hill that's what we're gonna do and uh the, the same hill that i blew my transmission on <laughs> so we're gonna go over the hill and see how the truck feels and if uh if it goes over the hill a lot nicer i mean you know my truck it is a diesel so even with the 40s and stock gearing they handled that hill just fine empty obviously not towing i never towed uh over it but we're gonna see how it feels now so let's go hit that hill so again you guys a little bit about what i was telling you about with the rpms i was going 50 miles an hour with my rpms cruising at like 1600 and i was getting my edge monitor was reading 15 miles per gallon. So at 15, 1600 RPM in overdrive at 50, you would think I'd be getting the best fuel economy with the low RPMs. But when I have the RPMs at like 2200 RPM going 70, I'm reading like 24, you know, 22 to 25 miles per gallon. So again, to summarize that a little bit, 1600 RPM, 15 miles per gallon. 2200 RPM, these are cruising uh, speeds. 22 to 25 miles per gallon so it's pretty crazy but you know your rpms being low don't necessarily mean you're getting better fuel economy man i don't know if it's the break-in period or what but i feel like it's getting better and better i honestly right now a bus was turning right in front of me and we were at a green light as soon as the bus finished his turn and i freaking gunned it not hard but i took off pretty good man this truck just went it just went it's it's pretty nice now right now i'm going over the hill we're about to come up to a red light so i'll be at a complete stop on the hill and uh accelerating from zero so this will be a good test right here uh, a complete dead stop on this hill once that light turns green we start going we'll see how it goes okay here we go i am barely accelerating i'm not pushing the pedal down very hard at all maybe maybe 25 percent pushing the pedal down here's about 30 percent i'm not even halfway down on the pedal but we are going uphill so it's it's feeling it i mean i'm already in the 40s 45 miles an hour almost and i barely pushed down on it i mean this hill is a pretty steep grade i wish i knew exactly how much i don't know exactly the grade on this hill but i am seriously at about 10 percent throttle uh 10 percent down on the pedal 1900 rpm going 45 getting uh 12 miles per gallon barely feeling it so it is nice going up this hill is like nothing you can definitely feel a big difference going up this hill i mean it handles it like nothing now by the way you guys i was mentioning to you the other day well in earlier in this video when i was on the highway we reached like 160 something degrees with our transmission temperature but like i said it was 92 degrees that day and i think that has a 
it plays a big role because today is not nearly as hot. I don't know how hot it is, but it's not nearly even close to 90 degrees. It's much cooler today. And even, I've been driving for a while and even going over that hill right now, I'm still sitting at 139 degrees on my transmission temperature. I haven't even touched 140 degrees on my transmission fluid temperature. I'm going down 138 degrees. It just dropped from 139 to 138. And I was going over that hill. So I definitely think that 92 degree day, and it, I mean, it said 92 on my weather thing, but to be honest with you, it felt hotter. It might've been closer to 9,500 degrees. It was a hot day. So I think that plays a big role. We dropped again, 137. I am at a stop, but still. Um, I think that we reached the 160 degree mark because it was a hot day. And like I said, even that is not bad because I used to see 190 to 200. So here we are, top right corner, you can see kind of 136 degrees right now in that top right corner so still definitely super happy with the Mishima trans cooler man it works great all right so we're going up the hill a second time we're going back over the other way back towards my house and I'm literally just holding 1600 rpm now up to 17 with barely barely pushing the pedal down and I'm holding 60 like nothing I'm literally let me show you I am literally just cruising barely have the pedal pushed down it looks like 1800 on the camera but really it's about 1700 rpm and we're just holding 60 like it's nothing uh, I, I'm sorry it's bouncy I know it's hard to see my gauge I'm at 59 miles an hour I am barely on it we're going up this hill like it's nothing look at passing this guy like it's nothing I am barely on it right now there you have it you guys the testing is pretty much done again i didn't get on it really as hard as i could because i'm waiting for the uh, gears to break in a little more so maybe later down the line after i put maybe a couple hundred miles on them and i feel like they're broken in more and i feel more confident we can really do some fun stuff i kind of want to see if i could do burnouts now to be honest with you i'd like to see if i could do you know some uh standing burnouts uh never really never could before on uh you know asphalt in the street i'd like to see if i could now I still don't know if I can, but I'd like to see because the truck definitely takes off better. Like I said, it's not like it's a race truck now, but it definitely takes off way easier. I put way less effort into it. I, I didn't get on it very hard at all in this video. So um, even still, I could feel a difference. So later on, we'll do some more. I do have some gauges coming. So we're going to have a, a dual pillar gauge and I'll have boost so we can get accurate read on boost since my edge monitor only reads up to 25 PSI. Uh, I'll get a 35 PSI boost gauge coming so we can see how much boost this truck is really getting. And the other gauge will be uh, exhaust gas temperature. Now, the cool thing is I already have the air intake heater delete plug, which is one of the places you can tie the boost gauge in. And I already have an exhaust gas uh, temperature port and adapter in my uh, header manifold. So I'll show you, see if I can get you a view. Where is it? Right there. See that right there? That is, let's see if I can point at it. Right there. That port is already an EGT sensor port. That used to be from when I bought the truck and it had the edge tuner on it. So the edge tuner, sorry, all up in my face. <laughs> the edge tuner that the truck used to have had the exhaust gas temperature readings on it. Uh, I, I got rid of that tuner for a couple different reasons. So we already have that place. All we have to do is tie in the new exhaust gas temperature sensor uh, plug into that to go to our gauge. And like I said, we just tie in for our boost off the air to your delete. So really all we have to do is install the gauges, but I don't have to drill into the, uh, a header manifold that's already got that uh, adapter and I don't have to get a T-line on the map sensor hose. I already have where I can tie in for turbo boost. So we're pretty much good to go. Uh, once we get them, we'll install those. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below to enter for your chance to win a NoFS decal. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Check out NoFSPro.com and I'll catch you guys on the next video.